Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here. And the first time I recorded this, I was really happy with it. It was like an 18 minute video. I sat down to edit it and found out that I was completely out of focus. So I finally got my remote monitoring set up. So let's try this again. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be reviewing this guy right here. It is the Chon XY or Chongxi XY3. So without further ado, let's get into the video. <music> So with the crazy amount of Ender 3 clones that I've got, I've got one on the floor I still need to review. There's the Ender 3 right there. Here's the Ender 3 clone and I have another one somewhere about. Um, it is really nice to change it up for a bit and this although is basically a clone in, a, in its sense too of a CR10, uh, it's still nice to change it up a little bit. So in this video we're taking a look at this guy. It is the Chonxi or Tron XY XY3. Uh, I was really excited when Chongxi actually hit me up to review this because it looked really, really promising. And to go over the specs really quick for you guys, it's got a build volume of 310 by 310 by I believe 330 or 340. So um, 10 millimeters wider in the X and Y than the CR10, but that's kind of a mute point. Um, it is a bit shorter because the CR10 has a 400 millimeter build volume Z height. But for me, this is actually more of an ideal build volume. I never go above the one foot by one foot by one foot, unless I'm just doing it for the sake of it to show you guys that it can indeed print to its max build volume. So I was really excited about that. A couple other things uh, about the machine is that it's got a nice little touch screen right here, um, which really works well and looks nice. Um, I'm thoroughly impressed with this, but the main board is actually inside of here too. So you've got a standard USB port, you've got a micro SD port, and you've got an exhaust fan on the back, which just keeps everything from getting too hot. Um, I really like that they were able to get everything just so compact inside here. Um, the power supply is mounted similar to an Ender 3 on the back right side. And overall, it's what you'd expect. It's a you know 2020 to 2040 millimeter extrusion machine. One thing that was super cool right out the way uh, when I opened the box up was they actually gave you a complete replacement hot end, which is crazy to me. Um, even on high end machines, they don't give you uh, typically like such a big piece of hardware to replace if need be. So having that available, which this is again, basically the exact same hot end that comes in the Creality's line of machines is super cool. So again, the big one up that I liked about this machine from the get go was that it doesn't take as much space as the CR10 uh, or the CR10 S because it doesn't have that huge umbilical cord Thing on the side. I have not done a very, very good job with cable management. There is some zip ties and I should really tighten things up, but for now, it's been functional and I've been doing a lot of printing on it. So let's talk about what uh, the setup and what it took to get this guy up and running. So the printer came and everything was in the box like it was supposed to be. Um, there was nothing missing, there was nothing damaged. And normally I feel like with product reviews, I shouldn't have to say that, but with these lower end kit printers or these pre-assembled printers from China, um, that has been more often not the case. There's been a lot of times where I receive a printer and either something's missing, something's damaged, something's broken, things are scratched up, like it's not uncommon for this anodized aluminum to be really scratched up. Luckily, that was not the case with this and setup was relatively easy. I was um, kind of hit the ground running within about 30 to 40 minutes and it's not a two or four screw setup like the CR10 is. It's more of like an Ender 3 type build where it does take you 30, 40 minutes. Like um, you do have to mount a couple of the pieces of aluminum. You have to mount the power supply. You have to mount the LCD screen and plug in all the wires. But even if you are a complete noob or novice and you've never done a 3D printer build before, this shouldn't take you more than an hour, hour 30 max. Um, the instructions are pretty straightforward and there's not enough there's not enough screws for you to get confused. It's really, really easy to get uh, get this up and running. So uh, I got everything set up. It doesn't have automatic bed leveling, which is something that, again, this kit, I didn't say, uh, it goes for right around 320 or 330 US dollars on Amazon. Um, so I wasn't expecting an auto bed leveling and it doesn't have that. So uh, I went ahead and grabbed a piece of printer paper and I, that has like kind of the um, assisting leveling tool where if you hit level, you can choose to tell it to go to the back, you know, back left, forward left, back right, uh, forward right, middle, so on and so forth. I never use that on machines because for me, it's as easy to just tell it to home itself, kill the power and then use your hand to kind of jog the bed and the hot end around. But you have that option if you want to. So I went ahead and leveled it and I started my first print with some PLA. I can't remember if this was PLA that actually came with the machine or whether it was my own, um, but I printed out this was a file that was on the printer. It was Lucky Cat Bank. So it's that cute little Lucky Cat that we're used to on so many of these machines, but kind of a larger version where you can put coins in and there's a little plug on the bottom, which is currently missing. Um, but this turned out awesome. I have no idea what the presets were. 
Uh, if I had to guess, I would say like 0.15 layer resolution or 150 microns. Um, and I was really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, but I didn't go ahead and print any of the other files on the SD card because out of fear that they sliced it at a really low resolution that it would take forever. That was a pretty long print. I don't remember exactly how long, but longer than I typically like to wait for a print. Um, so it did turn out really good, but after that I jumped over to Kira, uh, created a quick profile and sliced something of my own. So the second thing I sliced up was this Deadpool print, which turned out absolutely awesome. Um, normally I don't go so large with test prints, but in this case I kind of was like, it's a big printer, let's just throw something at it and see how it does. Um, so this was roughly a 35-ish hour print, uh, 0.2 layer resolution, 200 microns, PLA, this is Matter Hacker's Red Build Series PLA, and I was really, really excited with the print uh, and how it turned out. I think it turned out beautiful, it was an absolutely awesome model, and I think that this printer did a really good job. Um, there's a couple spots where it looks like it has some slight under extrusion, but that did not repeat itself on other prints, so I don't know whether it was just this fil uh, filament thing or what exactly, um, but all in all, this turned out as a very, very cool, very awesome print. Um, Something kind of happened though after the first couple prints, I noticed that the bed where I was removing the prints um, was looking like it was kind of falling apart because it does come with like that magnetic sort of like Chinese knockoff build tack uh, sheet and I have never had a very good long experience with it. Like it just, it works for a little bit and then it breaks every single time. So um, after the first couple prints, I saw it starting to get pretty jacked up. So I just removed it and threw on a printer tile, um, not a printer tile, a mirror tile. I've got a ton of them down here for one foot by one foot printers. This one's 310 by 310. So there's a little bit of a lip, but still works just as fine with the binder clips. Um, so I would highly recommend in your head anticipating that you're gonna need to do something similar um, to your printer. So uh, just wanted to let that be known. So then I also went ahead and printed out this guy, which was a massive print. I don't know exactly how tall it is, but definitely over one foot tall. Uh, it was about a 50 hour print. Um, same thing, 0.2 layer resolution, 200 microns. Um, it is uh, Matter Hacker's Build Series PLA. This is their forest green. And this is a model that I'd seen for a while and have really wanted to print. And I've actually attempted it on three separate occasions um, on a different machine in ABS. And every single time this tail would snap off once it got to like right here. So in this situation, I put on Z-Hop and I took it slower. Uh, and I think this thing turned out absolutely insane. I'm definitely gonna find a really good perch to put this on um, to show it off and maybe even paint it eventually. We'll see, I haven't done much painting, but it's something that with the resin printer, I've been kind of drooling over some of the miniature D&D paintings and uh, just some of the other paintings I've been seeing people doing. So I might, uh, I might dabble with that a little bit more uh, in the coming future here. So this was a really awesome print. And I think that again, that the Chonxy XY3 did a fantastic job. I wanted to mess a little bit more with this palette because I have had this palette now for about a month and haven't gotten to do nearly as much testing as I would like. And I've still got a ton of projects involved. So I actually went ahead and removed the filament runout sensor uh, because one, I don't use it very much and two, I just don't need it. Like I don't use it very much at all. I don't print big enough typically where it's a big concern for me. Um, and typically when I've had these and used them before, the gap that it leaves on the print is typically enough to where I'm not really happy with the end result. So I just removed it. It had two bolts holding it in place to the uh, aluminum uh, machine part on the back. And I quickly grabbed my calipers, measured out the holes and created my own little mounting solution for the pallets inlet uh, PTFE tube. So that is available on uh, Thingiverse, on my Thingiverse profile. If you're not following me on there, I do upload not as often as I would like. I actually have an archive of models that I need to upload, but it is on there. So if you do have this machine or do get this machine and you want to use a pallet with it, I at least have a good starting point for your mounting setup. Uh, but I did go ahead and print out this guy, which failed. It was a panda bear. And I knew from the get-go that it was gonna fail because I saw some weird slices on the bottom of his feet and then it kind of corrected itself and then when it got to the top, it just totally butchered the end of it. Um, but this was not this machine thing, it was a pallet thing, but I also don't truthfully wanna blame it on the pallet because I didn't do very much calibration and I think that I probably jumped the gun on how quickly I decided to just print something. I probably should have done a keychain on this one too to kind of get these splices correct. Um, but the quality turned out fine. I just, there's a bunch of supports underneath his chin and belly, which I didn't care to clean up because again, it's not really a model that I plan on probably keeping very long term. But I did do that. Um, after I did that and I was really happy with the PLA prints, I did a PETG vase, which seriously has gone MIA. I was looking for it before I recorded this and I can't find it anywhere. But what I do have is this guy, which is a Repcord Rept, uh, Reptar 
Reptar, Repcord, Reptar, Reptar? Repcord Raptor, thank you, holy cow. Um, it's been a long Easter, and uh, again, it's the second time recording it, so bear with me here. But uh, I printed out, finally, the Repcord Raptor, which I've been seeing a lot of people printing. I think it's a very awesome print. Um, this was, again, in Matter Hacker's filament. I had a little bit of their translucent green build series PTG laying around. I printed him at about 20% infill, and I think that he just looks awesome. It's such a great model. I can't think of the guy's name that modeled this, but huge shout out to him for um, creating this because it's gorgeous and I'll try to put credit somewhere in the video. Um, but yeah, I think this is absolutely insane. It's got little strands in his mouth to basically have filament hanging through like he's chomping on filament. Uh, and this was just a really great model. I was impressed with how little stringing and how little issues really I had with this uh, PTG without, without tweaking any settings. I believe I just used um, Cura, 4.0's default uh, PTG settings and it did a really good job with retraction and things like that go. Um, so yeah, I've been incredibly happy with this printer so far. It's gonna get a lot more use probably in conjunction with the palette. Once I've got some fine tuning, you guys will likely see some more videos on it. I've also got a really cool project for a board game that I just recently picked up and some organization slots for it, which I will be using this for. Um, but I seriously think this is an awesome printer uh, for the price of, again, roughly $320, and you can get on Amazon if you're in the US, which is really nice for prime shipping and their warranty policy that they have. Um, if you're looking to you know, up from your ender to a bigger machine, and you're not sure if you want to do a CR10 or CR10S, and you don't need, so like the cool thing about the CR10 having the side umbilical power supply thing is that if you do want to enclose it, it makes it easier. You don't have to reroute the electronics. Well, with this one, you would have to, but for someone like me that doesn't do ABS really, I'm definitely not gonna do polycarb. For all of the materials I need to print, they don't require having an enclosure, and this is the perfect setup for me because it just takes up less space. And again, I like the touchscreen. I am, there's nothing wrong with the knobs. They're functional and they work the same way, but I'm definitely not upset that, again, at this price point, I'm able to get a really nice touchscreen. Again, filament runout sensor, for those of you that do want it, I will say that for people that are looking to do like cosplay stuff, this is still beneficial even if when you resume it has a split or some kind of line because if you're doing cosplay stuff like a helmet or armor, typically you're going to fill it and bondo it anyway. It's just for me, the things I print, I'm not really finishing, so I'm not happy with having that gap. But if you're going to finish your, your print, then it doesn't really matter uh, and it's a nice feature to have certainly. And with the inclusion also of the replacement hot end, I just think that overall this is this is a really good value for what you're getting. So. Um, I will place a link in the comments down below. Um, if anybody's got any questions about this printer that I didn't answer, um, please let me know as well. I, I, I mean, I covered most of the basics. Again, it's based off of a CR10, but just a shrunken down um, CR10. So this is the Tronxy XY3. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've got some really awesome stuff coming up. I've got sick lighting and I'm working on uh, an even more legit setup so that way I can do some more detailed projects and videos and uh, just hopefully bring you guys more content truthfully. So on that note, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe if you're not already subscribed and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace guys.